Oh my god, I'm gonna talk with a lisp for like this whole video. Thanks. 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 Make your own thanks. I'm just gonna have to do this without bottom teeth. Okay, thanks. Oh, nailed it. Okay. What's up, guys? I'm Hendo, and today I'm showing you how to make things. <sighs> this tutorial is for making your own fangs using thermoplastic beads. This is a cheap and more versatile alternative to buying fangs or paying for custom ones. I'm gonna show you techniques for shaping them, then show you seven different combinations of shapes and placements that I think are really useful. I'm gonna be using a type of thermoplastic bead called Instamorph. You can get a small bag of it for $10 on Amazon. And this is way more than you'll actually need. Other brands include Polyplastics, Polymorph, and Friendly Plastic, some of which you can find in craft stores. Please don't use just any kind of plastic bead, like the kind that you find in stuffed animals or in beanbag chairs. It's not the same. It really has to be a thermoplastic that's safe for you to use in your mouth. You'll also need a heat gun or a hair dryer. You can actually heat it in boiled water, but I actually think that's a bit more dangerous and it's a bit more time consuming. So grab your thermoplastic and your heat gun and let's get started. The first step is to take a small pinch of beads and then heat them up. Use something to keep them from flying away, like a lid or bowl. Then use the heat gun to warm these little guys up. The beads will start to turn clear when they're warm enough. Once they're clear, bundle them together and make a small little ball with your fingers. I usually mold them into a cone shape because that's easier to hold, but I promise that that doesn't really matter in the long run. Also make sure that it's not too hot to put in your mouth. And if it isn't soft enough, just heat it up a little bit more. Things are usually on the incisor, so that's what I'm gonna start with. It's important that it covers both the front and the back. Too much is better than not enough because you can cut away the excess. First I focus on completely covering the tooth, and then I start to work on the fang shape. I use the back of my fingernail in order to get a straight edge on my fang. I kind of stick my fingernail into the groove of my tooth, then push it sideways so that it creates a point at an angle that lines up with this groove. Then I use my finger to flatten the fang so that it's level with my tooth and doesn't flare out. I basically alternate between these two motions until it's exactly the shape that I want. If your fingernails don't work or they aren't long enough, you can use any kind of plastic or metal tool, just make sure that it's safe for your mouth. I'm also going to press the plastic into my gum so that I know where to trim the excess. It can help to sort of use your fingernail to outline where your tooth is and make a more apparent line of where to cut later. Also, don't forget to bite down. This will make sure that your fang doesn't run into your bottom teeth and make sure that it really holds it in place. It's usually better if the front of the fang is a little thinner so that it doesn't protrude too far from your natural teeth, but the back of the fang can be thicker and make sure that it really gets a good hold and form to your mouth. I let it cool mostly in my mouth, but take it out before it dries all the way so that it's a little bit easier to trim. This is how the fang looks without trimming and with trimming. A lot of the time, you aren't really gonna see your gums anyway when you bare your teeth or smile, but just in case, I like to trim it back just in case I grin really hard. When you move on to shaping the next tooth, I find that it's easiest to put the one that you've already done in your mouth to look at for a reference. That way they end up the same shape and size. Obviously, it's best if you can do all of this in one go. You can't really heat up the beads once they're in your mouth. It actually cools pretty slowly, so you do have a few minutes to work with. But if you don't get it right on the first try, just go for it again. It usually takes me a while to get into the swing of it, and I often make several pairs before deciding which one I like best. Okay, now you've got two matching fangs. And now that you know how to make fangs, you can play around with the size and placement. I'm making these fangs for Toga from My Hero Academia. She's kind of crazy and has pointy fang-like teeth, but she doesn't really have like full vampire teeth. So here's an example of fangs that are a little bit shorter than vampire teeth, but are still clearly fangs. Another thing to consider is how easily visible you want your fangs to be. If you have a short mouth like mine, you probably can't see your incisors that well unless your mouth is open and you're like smiling or kind of baring your teeth. And that can get a bit tiring and awkward sometimes. So here's an example of fangs on the teeth next to your front teeth. In this case, I don't really have to hiss or smile in order for my teeth to be shown. It's a good option for more candid photos where my mouth is relaxed. Many characters also have pointy bottom teeth, and it's the same process to make these too. These can be a bit trickier if you have an overbite like me. In this case, be extra sure that your fangs go under your front teeth. And here's a comparison of all three styles with and without the bottom teeth. This way you can see all the differences between them and sort of expect what's gonna work best for you. You can also play with a few extra types of fangs. It's common for cutesy animal type characters to have just one snaggle fang. The key when making a snaggle fang is just sort of making it protrude out. Again, my mouth is kind of short, so I can really only accomplish this on the tooth next to my front teeth. It can even be a snaggle fang from the bottom, which is often how Beast Boy is depicted. I have an overbite, so it's a little bit more awkward for me to try and hold my mouth this way, but you get the picture. 
And because of this, it's harder for me to hold it in my mouth, so I actually didn't trim away any of the gum excess so that I had that extra stability. If you're making teeth for a kid and you're kind of worried about them swallowing it on accident, you can actually make a bridge instead. In this case, you just use more plastic beads together and you heat it up so that it goes from one incisor all the way across your front teeth to the other incisor. You can use your nails or tools to sort of define the grooves between your teeth, but overall it's probably just not going to look as realistic. However, it's much safer and you can still trim it back to the gum so that it's a little bit more realistic. In any case, it'll look better from far away, it'll fit your kid's mouth better, and you don't have to worry about them choking on it. There are tons of other options out there too. In Underworld, Celine actually has a pointy incisor tooth and the tooth next to it. Some of the vampires in that series also have multiple pointy bottom teeth. You can also get these thermoplastic beads in other colors. You could use the black ones to make a cap over your teeth and make it look like you have missing teeth. The potential is basically infinite, just make sure that you're being careful and safe and never drink or eat anything while wearing them. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. If you try it out, feel free to share your results in the comments below. I always like to see what everyone else is making too. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you want to see me make next. And until next time, I'm Hendo. Thanks for making stuff with me.